Hi everyone and welcome back to the third video in our NumPy tutorial series. In this video we're going to be covering a lot of the basic functions like addition, subtraction, and how they can be used in NumPy. <clears throat> so let's just get right into it. We're going to start like we have in the past. We're going to do import NumPy as MP and this time I'm going to exit out of that. Um, and let's just define some basic um, arrays like we have in the past. So what I'm going to do is np.arange which is going to put out an array that is 30 long. So let's just print this out just to confirm what you guys are thinking. And so you can see that it's 0 up to 29. It's just one big long vector. And so after that what we are going to do is we'll do b equals b dot reshape five by six and so we're going to take this big long vector that just has one dimension and we're going to split it up into two dimensions so it's going to line it up so there are five rows and six columns and so we'll go ahead and we'll print this so you can see the difference and you can see that it indeed has five rows and six columns and so I'm going to basically just copy and paste this and make a second one because in this what we are going to do is we will um, be adding them and doing all sorts of other operations so I need two of them. So I'll skip this print, I'll get rid of this print now that we know what they look like and then we are going to move to basic addition. So I showed this in the first video actually where you can just add A and B and it is going to go through and it will add 0 to whatever is in the 0th index and or 0th column and 0 row and the 1 is going to match up with the other one so basically actually let me let me just I'm going to print these all up so I can show it off whoops B print A and so you can see all of them in a row and so here's our first array second array and here's the one where they're added together and so you can see that it's 0 plus 0 is still 0 1 plus 1 is 2 2 plus 2 is 4 and so on so you can see that they just went through and they added all of them together and so you can do addition. I can show we can also do multiplication. It's all the same syntax like you're used to in Python. And it's just a much better way to do it than with lists or something like this. It's much more efficient. It's faster. You don't have to write as much code. You don't have to write a for loop or something like that. So now you can see 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9 and so on. And so that's pretty simple. We can also do subtraction or addition or any any normal Python operation. And it's going to basically work how you expect, except for maybe division. So if we look at this, it turns out that it will actually no. That's that's about what we expect. But it you one thing you will notice is it turned it into a float because of the NAN or the, the not a number, the overflow where we did zero divided by zero. And so now what I'm going to do is we will move on to um, putting something to the power of another one. So this is going to do zero to the power of zero, one to the power of one, two to the power of two, and so on. <coughs> and so we see that is indeed 0 to the power of 0 which is 1 1 to the power of 1 which is 1 2 to the power of 2 which is 4 but then you look down at these other values and you realize how the heck did 14 time or 14 to the power of 14 end up a negative value that doesn't make any sense and so what you have to realize 
is that that is dictated by the data types. So what I have over here is all of the different data types that are used in um, NumPy. And so we showed in a previous one where we, we had something that was a float and we changed it to an integer. And so in here, what we have, let me print this out, print a dot d type. You can see that we actually have an int 32. And so if you look at this, int 32 goes from negative 2 billion, I don't know, that's a large number and it doesn't have commas. It, it has a large range, but it turns out that 14 to the power of 14 is even larger than that number. So it has overflowed. It has gone beyond that number and it has wrapped around to negatives and it's gotten all screwed up. So that's just something to be conscious of when you're, when you're picking your data type because you can change the data type and make it something that's more fitting to your needs. You might want to um, change it to a float or something like that. Um, and moving on now that we've done powers one of the very useful things is I'm gonna stop printing these actually no I'll leave it one of the very useful things is we can do sum so let's do b dot sum And so what that's going to do is it will add up every single item in the list and it turns out that all of these add up to be 435. And so that's kind of useful but not really because like let's say we have some data and it's columns and rows obviously that's how it's organized and it doesn't really make sense to add up columns and rows because it turns out they're actually different kinds of data so it might be um, I don't know let's say let's say it's weight and height or something like that it doesn't make sense to add 72 inches to 150 pounds or something like that so what we actually want to do is let's just add up um, one axis so um, if we want to just add up the M axes, then we're going to be putting in the parameter axis equals zero. And so we can see that this is going to be 0, 6, 12, 18, 24. If you add those all up, what do we get? We get 60. And so you see that this is this output right here is the sum of this um, this column, this column, this column, this column, and so you can see that it's adding by five on each one. So that's, and then if we want to do the other axis, we do one. So the M axis is um, zero, the N axis is one. And so we add that up and you see that we get 15, 51, 87, 123, and 159. So that's pretty valuable to be able to sum up columns and rows like that. Next thing we'll do is min. This will grab the minimum value. For us, we're expecting it to be zero. Sure enough, we get zero. We also have max. And then we have this alternate, which is argmax. And so what this is going to do is it will tell us the position of the maximum. And so it's kind of bizarre because it turns out that it gives us 29 here too. So it, it doesn't give us the value of like you have to go five call or five rows down and then um, sixth um, sixth row. So it gives us 29 again but let's let's print off both of these so let's do max and I'm going to change this from a range to be zeros and so with B actually let's make them both zeros or both let's just do both B and so we can actually see 
the difference between the two. Actually, that doesn't work. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to show off what I was going to show is that the max is definitely pulling out the maximum value from the thing. So you might have like 0, 21, 37, 142. And it's going to just pop out 142. Whereas argmax is going to pop out 0, 1, 2, 3. And so it would just pop out 3 if you had something like that there. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to um, work on making a new um, array for us just to show that point. And so the other thing we can do instead of argmax is argmin, argmin, obviously. So that will give us the value where the minimum lies. And so the next thing we will do is we will show off indexing. So <clears throat> it's slicing and indexing. So let me set this back to a range. And so let me just print this off so I can do a little bit of discussion on it. <clears throat> so what we see down here is here's our array again. And we have all of these lined up. And so like we were doing before, we have our m axis and our n axis. And so when we're indexing, we're going to be calling it based on those numbers. So we can do something like this where we do, um, let's say we want to grab 12. We can say um, 2 down because it's 0 index. So it's 0, 1, 2. And so we can do that. But it turns out that gives us the entire second um, row. But what we want is just the first item. So we can do 0, and that will grab the first one. So it'll just grab 12, and then you just have that single value. But let's say <coughs> you want to grab not just 12. Let's say this is like some header, and you just don't want this anymore. Then you could grab all of these. So you could do from 2 all the way to the end. So let's say 2 and then colon will just give us to the end. So that should give us the last three rows. And sure enough we get the last three rows. And so you can do that on both axes. And so we could do 1, 2, 3, so what we're going to grab is we're going to grab from here down and then within there we're going to grab columns 1 through 3. So it's going to be 13, 14, 15 and below those ones. And so that is one notation to do it. But the other notation to do it is um, we can just do a comma. So we could do comma 1 through 3 and that will give us similar results. And then we can also do one additional thing. I'm going to show this with a single index so we can just show that off where you can do steps. So let's say we want to grab every other row. So let's say we want to grab the 0 row, the 2 row, and the 4 row. What we can do instead of hard coding that and just saying I want to grab this specific one and that specific one and that specific one, we can do 0, 2, the end. I'll do, I'll just leave it blank for now. But then what we do is we add a second colon and then after that we put our step size. So I'll say every two steps we want to grab a column. And so you can see we grabbed this one, this one, and this one like we expected to. And so these are just some of the very important basic operations you can do with NumPy. I got most of this information 
from the quick start tutorial. I'll put this in the um, video description. You can look and you can see all of their example code showing all of the different um, various uses and functions in here. Uh, in the next video, what we are going to be working on is some of the, um, where'd my dot go? Some of some of the more important dimensional stuff where we have to um, combine arrays and unravel them and take the transpose and actually do um, matrix multiplication. And so we will work on that in the next video. Hopefully this was helpful. See you in the next one.